Hey, what's up folks? This one's going to be fun. We're going to talk about cloud optimized geotips. And I'm a little late to this party because as I've said many times before, I'm not a raster guy. All those pixels look the same to me, but it's, it's, it's pretty cool and you can do a lot with them. And we're going to take a look at that. Now, a cloud optimized geotiff is a TIFF that can take advantage of an HTTP range request. The file is structured in a way that it can use that to just get the bits it wants. Now, if you watch a YouTube video, you might notice that YouTube fetches where you are in the video and then a little bit more, and then just keeps progressively doing that. If you skip toward the end of the video, it doesn't load everything in between the beginning and where you want to go to. It, it starts again where you pick to go and then starts buffering a little bit from there. And that's an HTTP range request. If you have a large binary file, rather than grabbing the whole thing, you can just tell the HTTP get request to just get this portion of that binary. And that makes things so much faster for YouTube and it also makes things so much more faster for a more faster, faster for a cloud optimized geotiff. And that's what the brilliant people that came up with this figured out. So I'll link to their main page and give you all the technical details. Uh, to be honest, I don't really know the technical details. I started to read them and then I stopped reading them. But if you want to check all that out, this is really genius stuff. You can check it out there. Now you can build a cloud optimized geotiff in the same way you would build a regular geotiff. In other words, you're using Google or you're using something that's really charging you money to use Google. Google. So I have a script I'll share. I'll, I'm going to have lots of links. If you're in the YouTube video, There'll be a link to the blog post, which will have code samples and hyperlinks and all kinds of stuff. I usually don't like to put that all in the YouTube comments because it's just URLs and formatting there is just gross. But I made a script and bigger. Why can't, why, why can't, why, why? Can't VS Code do the control scroll wheel thing to zoom in? I always, I always have to fumble with that. I can basically give it, and and this is a batch file for Windows, but it look fairly similar for as a shell script for Linux. I run Windows at work because life is not fair. But I'm just giving it a directory and kind of a fuzzy path to get images. Then uh, I'm setting some other variables and whatnot. But it's I'm. Building a vert from what's usually hundreds to many thousands of images we get our aerials delivered as. And then I'll warp those to a particular thing. You can just do a Google translate here, but I was just doing warp so I can get them all in the same projection. And then I build overviews with Godaladu. And Godaladu, you don't have to specify the uh, levels anymore you can let it just figure that out for itself. And I figured out it is better at that than I am. So I just leave that alone. Goodala do, and I'm doing JPEG compression on all this to make it as small as possible. And then to make the cog of the cloud optimized geotiff, I'm using a tool called Cogger. And I'll link to that GitHub project in, in the show notes. And they have binaries for Windows and Linux and, and what have you. And that basically just takes your output TIFF with all the overviews and everything and rearranges it into a, a cloud optimized GeoTIFF schema or format. And then you have a cog. You can also go directly to a cog from Google. Google Translate has an output format of cog you can use. Uh, I just found this to be, since I needed to do a warp anyway, I just found this to be faster, but there is an option to, there's an output format of COG for newer versions of Google as well. That's it. And that spits out an image. And depending on what you got, our latest stuff is like three inch resolution and it takes uh, a extraordinary amount of time on my crappy work windows machine. And over that network, it's like 12 hours or so, but eventually, you'll end up with something like this. And one of the reasons I first got into that is because our aerial deliverables for our mosaics, they come in like a six piece 
set of Mr. Sid files and they're just slow as hell. So I was going to do something with them anyway. But as you can see, this is like, oh my God, how can you be this fast kind of fast for the file itself. You can get right up in people's Right up there, business. Nice pool you got there, buddy. Got a little hose here. You might want to put that up. Jeez, somebody might be looking from the sky. But anyway, that is, we're not taking advantage of the cloud optimized part of the TIFF just going over the network. But when you build a COG, it's probably going to be a pretty damn fast image just to you over a network as well. Because you built in overviews, it's all, it's all. It's all cool. Oh, hey, see these tanks? Do you not go swimming in there, kids? You'll end up with an eye right in the middle of your forehead. All right, so that's making the file. And it's it's just a series of commands I run. It's a bunch of Goodle and this Cogger thing. It's probably nothing you're not already familiar with. But if you haven't done a whole lot of Google command line, it's a little esoteric, but uh, it's mostly you'll get get it working right and just copy and paste that forever and it'll work great forever. So that's that. But to use the cloud optimized part, you've got to get this on a server that can do HTTP get range requests. And the most popular place to do that right now is Amazon's S3. So we'll go over and this is not going to be a full AWS course. Please, if you're going to do AWS stuff, uh, go take like a three or four hour welcome to AWS kind of course, because AWS is a lot. I tried jumping straight into it and immediately jumped right back out. And I found a good course on LinkedIn Learning, which as part of our library system, I get free access to. Uh, and I'll link to that in the show notes as well. And it, it really helped me get started. But S3, and you'll see if I go to services, you see this mountain of stuff? That is all AWS services. I mean, it's there's a lot, a whole lot, an incorrect amount. Uh, but we're not going to touch all of that. There's a few things we're going to touch. The first thing is S3. S3 is their storage bucket. And it's pretty straightforward. You can just create a bucket and set it to, I just have this set to public access and I just named it Ariel's 2264. That's the EPSG of the projection these are in. And you see our 2021 with the three inch resolution is like 38 gigabytes. So by the way, I should say too, uh, this stuff isn't going to be here for very long. So you're not gonna be able to use this for like funsies because this is all going on my credit card when I, while I play around with it and uh, I don't like you guys that much. So uh, all of this won't be here forever. It's just while I, I'm playing around with it. So don't get too excited. Start downloading the, the freaking planet from my S3 bucket. So I've got these TIFFs and you can look at, look at them and it'll give you the object URL to that TIFF. That's how you'd get to it. You don't want to just click on that because it's going to start downloading a 40 gigabyte image. What you can do from QGIS or ArcGIS Pro, let's just turn this off. We'll go uh, uh, layer, add layer, add raster layer, and we're going to switch it over to HTTP protocol. And we're going to give it that URL. I'll just uh, copy that. Paste it over here. It's already detected that that's a uh, cloud optimized geotiff. We're gonna hit add. Since it's not in a state plane, it's going to yell at me about how I'm doing transformations or something, I think. Uh, yeah, fine. And it's gonna add that. And the first time it draws, and for a little bit after that, there'll be some delay. Like you'll see, this. This is this 40 gigabyte TIFF coming from the cloud. I'll zoom in. You'll see there's another delay here, but it's really behind the scenes fetching a whole lot of stuff it needs because once it you get that delay a few times, it starts really going fast. Like you see now it's like not much slower than just having that cog straight on your local 
No, or, uh, it's going to think here for a second. But I don't think this would replace having, you know, a TIFF sitting on your hard drive or on a network server. But for, say, you want to give the public access to your imagery, you can put it out in S3 in a cloud-optimized GeoTIFF and do it. And you can do this. Cloud-optimized GeoTIFFs can work with ArcGIS Pro. They will not work with ArcGIS Desktop because uh, reasons. I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they want you to stop using that. That's, that's the reason why. But for ArcGIS Pro and QGIS, this is all coming. It's a 40 gigabyte or so TIFF coming from the cloud going that fast. Because what it's doing is QGIS is smart enough to know this is the area I'm looking at. Hey, Cog, I need to get a range request of this 40 gigabyte file that's going to fit this space. And that's all it needs to return, not that whole 40 gigabyte file. Pretty sweet, huh? So that already we're doing really cool things. We have that in S3. But this is coming back as a TIFF. Your web browser doesn't know what a TIFF is. So it has to have this in a different format. And how are we going to do that? Well, Development Seed has this cool thing called, I think they pronounce it T-Tyler. And I'll, I, there's going to be a bunch of links in the show notes for this thing. I'll put a link to that. And it is essentially a Tyler. So it will take a Cloud Optimized GeoTIFF from S3 and chop it up however you want and send that image back in a JPEG or a PNG or a WebP file that your browser can understand. Now the way you do this or use this in Amazon is through what's called a Lambda. A Lambda is a serverless function. So you're basically giving it a function or like, like an API and Amazon will spin instances of that up and close them back down as you need them, which is cool. So let's check that out. If you go to your Amazon stuff, and for a lot of this, you can get away with the free tier for a bit. And even at the charge tier, it's not too bad. I think I had a 10 gigabyte TIFF in Amazon for a month, and it charged me like a dollar. <laughs> so. Uh, you can do a lot of playing around before it hurts. Just, you know, keep an eye on things because uh, things can creep up on you. If you go over to the AWS services, there's something called a serverless application repository. And T Tyler is in there. We'll go to available applications. And you need to click this show apps that create custom IAM roles. That's access management roles. It's like... Uh, it's like roles and account security sort of thing. We go T I T I. Oop, too many. Dinosaur. There we go. We want this person. Now this is the Tyler from Development Seed, and thank you so much, Development Seed, for for releasing this. They had another thing that did this, like Code Geo Tyler that I didn't realize was kind of superseded by this and I had a hard time getting that running. This runs great because it's as this uh, you know automatically deploying thing. So you can look through at the template what it's going to do and what it's going to put where and the permissions it needs and it has a few application settings you can set and you can change these later as well. You need to acknowledge that this creates custom IM roles. And then you hit deploy. And that is going to create your Lambda and all the rules for it. So if we go back to AWS and go to our Lambda, these are these serverless functions. You'll see it created this thing with the, the really uh, awful name to it. Everything in Amazon gets really awful names by default. I, I don't know why. See, it's just basically importing their T Tyler app and the app itself isn't designed to run as a lambda but it's using this uh, magnum wrapper which kind of sits in between T Tyler and lambda and translates everything back and forth 
which is very nice. This is this isn't all the code of this app. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's put in as a uh, a layer. That's the Tyler and and Google. So that's it. You really don't have to, once you hit that deploy, it'll crunch for a little while and then you're pretty well done. And you'll see uh, when you look at the, let's see. See if I can remember how to, to get the URL for this stupid thing. Uh, it's, is it the API gateway? Yeah. It's the API gateway, and that's, so this is the URL you would use to get to that. So if we just, uh, let's just copy this, go to a new tab, and one of the routes for T. Tyler is docs, which will get you to a, uh, uh, this is like the, the, the open API, uh, what's, what's the name of it? I use this in in dirt uh, and it's gone but it's the same sort of thing where you can actually try different uh, like let's just do a request let's get a tile and one of the nice things about T Tyler is my rasters are in North Carolina State Plain it will do the projection stuff for us which is really good because we have some needs for stuff in State Plain and other needs we need 3857 for web stuff this way we don't have to store it twice in S3 buckets. Let's go to get a tile. We'll try it out. And this is just a map tile location. Uh, 3.6, I do not have this memorized. 103. And the Y is 51816. 51816. And let's get this as a WebP, they're smaller. The rest of this stuff will be fine. And this URL, we're going to give it the URL to our uh, our S3 bucket for that TIFF. I think I just put it in a scratch file here so I could get to it quick. Get that. Put that as our URL. And the rest of this stuff we will leave the same. Go down here and say I'll accept a WebP execute. Let this crunch. And there's that image that we requested. Now you notice it wasn't super fast, uh, but uh, one thing about Lambda is it's spinning up and down and then freezing and thawing as it needs them. And if it hasn't been used in a while, it, it will take a couple seconds to fire back up. But you can see the URL, it kind of looks like this. A lot of this is not required, but that's it. That's how we get that image. So let me show you how that would look in a leaflet map. Let's go back over here and I'm going to comment this out. Comment this in. You'll see this is going to that URL, the really funky one to that, to the to Tyler Lambda and giving it that same argument essentially we used to produce that one. So I'm going to save that. And I'm going to open up a private browser window. By the way, this is like Edge in Linux for the lulls. I've been using it for a while. I have to say, it's not bad. I mean, I know it's just Chrome, but it's not bad. So let's go to this local host. And it's going to be drawing these images uh, as tiles on the fly. So it is fetching these and making these tiles and sending them back as I request them. Let's get in here and it's going to start filling these images in. Images in. Now we're zoomed in, uh, that one's filled in. Let's zoom in a bit closer. It's going to start filling these in. So that works. That works fine. You can use this just as a lambda to uh, fill these images in. And we are live tiling. So the great thing about this is one that you're one you're live tiling, but two, you normally when you make tiles, you at some point uh, say mercy and stop, maybe around zoom level 18 or so. With this, 
you can just keep on trucking to well past where you'd normally cache stuff because the files get every zoom level you go is like quadrupling the size of your cache every once in a while on doom live it'll like not fill them all in and then if i i go out and go back they're they're there it's i think leaflet just gets tired of waiting on them and they they come in later but leaflet doesn't draw that's my guess anyway that's cool really cool so we we have a cloud optimized geotiff in aws that we can draw with our desktop clients so we can share them out to the public the public doesn't have to come to your home base with a giant hard drive anymore you can say you know get it here's our our s3 image in the bucket go get it there we got this tie link that'll do desktop clients but it is not very fast uh it it's it is not uh, it for what it's doing it's quite good but it's not nearly as fast as just having this stuff pre-built so let me show you how we're going to deal with that let me close this there is another AWS product called Cloud <laughs> Cloud something. Let me go again. Uh, CloudFront. CloudFront is a a CDN, uh, so you can have your web stuff on Amazon, and then CloudFront can shell it out to CDN edge locations all over the planet. Uh, it will also do caching. So what you can do in CloudFront is you can set up a new, they call it a distribution, and you give it a name. And the original path, this is where you'd put the path to that to Tyler, T Tyler Lambda. And then when it goes down to default cache behavior, you can go to this cache key origin request and set cache policy and you can create a policy and here's where you could set the time to like uh, months or even years out because these images aren't really changing I just set mine to a couple of months I think just set your minimum maximum default TTL settings so these are in seconds so just make it a ton of seconds you can there, there's math there you can apply to a couple of months or six months or whatever you want and now when we hit this cloud front it is going to hit uh that lambda and cache the results so it's only gonna have to hit that lambda once while that stuff is still cached and then you'll put in that stuff and hit create and, and now you've got a new cloud front that takes a little while to deploy and I just did that for my Lambda. So now this person will have a uh, URL. Mm -hmm. Original domain, I believe. Yeah, it's basically that. It's a HTTPS colon slash slash in front of that. So, uh, let me go back to this. Uh, no, it's not that. That that is the uh, that is the location of ah, it's in here somewhere. Anyway, it comes out to this URL down here. So if see if I go to this and it has it'll have CloudFront in the URL, and again it's it's an ugly name. I could probably do something better there. But if I go there and go back to uh, the docs, it I've already been here before, so it's getting this docs from a cache it's built of the Tyler docs, and you can go through and, and do all of your stuff. So now I've got a layer added to Leaflet from CloudFront, which is being essentially like a caching proxy for our Lambda. So now if I open a new private window, so you know there's no hook supposed to go going on, go to Logos, see it draws instantly because I've already been panning and zooming 
a bit around here. See, there's a little bit on the edge there I haven't gotten before, so it's going to actually no, it's already got that. That's that's that window peeking through. I've been down through this area before, and you see it's zoom, 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 because now it's hitting from the cache. See, I haven't got this that that stuff up there was not cached yet, so I got that from Landa, but now it's cached for whoever else is going to come in here that's coming through that particular cloud front edge is going to get that. And it doesn't have to wait on your, your Lambda to draw those tiles in. And as people use your aerials, that cache will just get filled out. Cool. Super cool. I'm super thrilled with all that. I'll probably uh, show this to some people at work. They'll, they'll roll their eyes at me and go, Tobin, God, why are you doing all this nerdy stuff? And they'll, it's just going to go away. But I thought it was super cool. And at the very least, we're, we're getting some fast uh, tips to use locally out of it. Now, I'm using Amazon Web Service for all this stuff. It seems to be the go-to place for cloud-optimized geotips. I know uh, Azure has a similar service that is supports HTTP GET range requests. And you can also host all of this locally. You can set up a couple of Docker, there's a Docker image for T-Tyler. You can set up a, like a varnish cache in front of it. And there's a, a I can't remember what it's, it's like, Mimic or Mimic. There, there's a thing you install with Docker that essentially simulates S3 in the get range request. So you could host all of this locally I have a feeling just from economies of scale that might co end up costing you more in the end. Just getting server space for a boatload of images. It depends on how sane your your uh, IT support is. I think we're paying like $28 a gigabyte for storage space. So it's like, yeah, no, it gets. That's not going to work out. But you can't host all this stuff yourself. Uh, you don't have to go cloud and you can do different parts of it yourself. Uh, you could put the imagery in Amazon AWS S3 buckets and you can host the T Tyler and the caching locally. Or you might have some performance problems there because the lambdas have to go a lot further away to get that, but maybe not. Or you could have the lambda and the S3 in Amazon and just have a varnish cache locally getting stuff from there. You can mix and match this stuff, but uh, doing it all in AWS, once I wrapped my head around everything, it is pretty darn cool. One other thing I'd warn you about AWS, besides take a course, is make sure when you create your stuff, your, your Lambda and your buckets, you're doing it all from the same region. If you put your S3 bucket in one region and your Lambda's, your Lambda T Tyler in a different region, you're going to have some performance problems. And it might actually cost you more too. There might be a different charge based on whether you're going inter region or between regions. All right. That is all of the COG stuff in a nutshell. I've been playing with this stuff. It's taking me too long. I would play with it for like three or four hours and then get stuck on something and think I have to Google that and then not come back for a few weeks and then I have to figure out what I was doing again. There's been a lot of stuff going on at work. But that's that's COGS in a nutshell. The people that came up with the COG idea and got it working are geniuses and they're doing great work for all of us. And thank you so much to Development Seed for releasing this T-Tyler. It makes it literally a, a one click to go from something you can use in a desktop GIS client to something you can use in everyday web mapping tools like Leaflet or MapLibre. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I will have all kinds of links in the blog post to a lot of this stuff. And I will catch you later. Bye-bye.